Greetings, greetings, greetings. Actually, I should um, let's just get uh, over here. Welcome to another Lockdown Level Up Live. Hi, it is me, Colin Clapp, coming at you from rural France, where today we have just heard we will be allowed out in about two weeks. So yeah, um, very exciting, very exciting. So yeah, let us know if you are new to the show, where in the world are you? We want to hear where you are, um, what lockdown looks like for you. Maybe you have some news that you can share. So yeah, so be, yeah, use the chat, use the comments, and um, come on, come on in. Right, so um, yeah, so it is now Thoughtful Thursday. And if you've been uh, tuning into a few previous shows, you'll know that this is all an evolution. Um, we've only had the hashtags. <laughs> I've actually had the hashtags quite a while. Um, they were introduced while we were in Vietnam when I was binge producing a bit of video back in, I guess, maybe about a year ago. We, we moved to Vietnam March of 2019, not long after our second daughter was born and we're there for six months and during those six months I managed to get a little bit of binge video content created um, then fell by the wayside uh, but during that I was practicing the hashtag so we have mashup Monday we have tech Tuesday world schooling Wednesday thoughtful Thursday and family Friday and they are rough framework um, for us to sort of create content that we hope is of interest and value to you guys so today is Thoughtful Thursday. Um, if you I say if you've seen previous episodes, you'll know that I am leveling up by practicing using this software. So even right now, I'm practicing getting used to talking to a camera that I've never done before. And if I was to do a quick, uh, if I try this, I just quickly changed the scene and the software that I'm using, and that allows me to talk to you directly to. This camera, which is the MacBook Pro, so over here, so uh, this this is the building camera to the MacBook Pro, and over here we go back and talking at you from my Canon camera, which is acting as a kind of webcam. I'll just show you. Let me just see. I'll just put you back. So if you if you've been watching the show, you'll know that. I've been trying to get this thing working for a while and didn't, yeah, I've had a few full starts, but uh, I reckon, I reckon I, I'm on to it now. But I'd love some feedback as to, I'd love some feedback if whether this is actually in focus. It's hard for me to tell. Um, the image I'm getting on the screen is, is an, apparently a true reflection of what you see. We're also battling, I have to confess, not a great internet connection here in France. We're in a very rural area um, and yeah, all you know, world events aside, it is just, uh, I'm not convinced we, we're getting a great, great signal. And so it looks a bit grainy to me and I can't, can't quite tell. Also should mention, if you're new to the show, you'll know that there is a live delay between me and me talking and what you're seeing, which reminds me, I will just go in and uh, we'll just pause that and I'm going to hope that you are hearing all of this. Make sure you are hearing this. Trust you're hearing this. Um, Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Let, 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 so let's get it. So thoughtful Thursday. Um, I want to bring you back and just sort of give you some frameworks that you can you can tie into. So, what's on your mind? What have you been thinking about? Um, I think I put it in some postings on social tonight. You know what? Uh, what meaningful? Um, what meaningful matters are you mentally processing right now? What what new viewpoints have you justified? Um, what new perspectives have you got? So, what's on your mind? I, we want to hear. We want to thought 
thought leaders, come on and share your thoughts. We want to hear your wise words, and I'm excited to excited to you know hear. So that uh, I get to a bit of housekeeping. So on the screen, it's it, it's a it's a spontaneous show. It's meant to be fun, light-hearted, uh, and serious at the same time. You can drop in any time. The link on the screen. Let me just uh, we'll go over here. Got a link on the screen, and I I that effectively allows you to drop into the show anytime. Okay, so all you have to do is type that URL into your browser, or if you go to the live chat, you should be able to click on it and jump straight into a virtual room, and we can bring you on the show. We've had guests from New Zealand, we've had guests from Mexico, we have had guests from, uh, we have had guests from uh, France, England, uh, America. So I repeat, if you're new, where in the world are you? What does lockdown look like for you? What are you experiencing? As I say, we <coughs> we just got the news to we just got the news tonight that we are we are going to be yeah let, let out. Actually, um, this is coincidence, but Ellie's left some uh, notes here. And she didn't leave them for me, but I was borrowing the notepad. Um, but yeah, from the second, so 11th of May opening, we've got libraries opening, markets opening, work crashes in school, people can go back to small, small museums, local transport, parks and gardens. That's probably the biggie for us. Um, but at the same time, we are in a very, we're in a very rural uh, part of France, we've got four. We're house sitting, so we. I'll come. I'll come back to that in a minute. But um, yeah, and then on the second of June, so I guess that's three weeks after. Three weeks after the easing of restrictions, there will be a decision on cafes, cinemas, churches, big museums, restaurants. And we already knew that there will be no major outdoor events like sporting events, festivals, or big events uh, in France until September. So I'm a big football fan, and I knew that that they've cancelled the French uh, football season, which is which has really caught the rest of the football world. Um, oh, not totally by surprise, but it. Well, I guess not by shock, but. A bit of surprise that 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 they've made that decision this early. Whereas you know around the world, the, the football uh, leagues are scrambling to try and create uh, finish their football seasons, and so that's a topic for another day. Uh, but yeah, so we Ellie and the girls haven't been out the house since lockdown. So I mean that's maybe four, five, six weeks. I've kind of lost lost track now. <laughs> Been quite happy in in our, our rural abode, uh, but the girls physically haven't. So let me get let me just put that right. The girls haven't been outside of our hamlet, shall we say? So we are we are we we feel quite blessed because we are in this rural hamlet. There's only four houses around us. Three we've. We believe three are occupied, but we've only seen neighbours in two of them. But although it's very late at night here and I can't really show you anything, if I'm the window behind me, I'm just staring out a countryside as far as we can see. We've got two acres of land to look after and it's springtime here in, in Europe. And we, we've got our hands full, but it does mean um, there, there's woods around here. There's a wood over to the garden, uh, over to the right of the garden. I mean, the garden itself is huge. You know, we haven't had garden like this in our entire life um, and then there's a wood there is um, farmers fields around and we can walk around the fields or sort of through the fields into other fields and then we come to these wind farms and we stand underneath these amazing windmills and I say we can we hardly see a soul and we've got a dog to look after so we don't actually feel that restricted in terms of movement you know we've got friends back in 
different parts of the world and, and friends back in Asia are cooped up in apartments and we loved apartment living when we were in Asia, which was only, um, you know, eight weeks ago. We, we arrived in France just a week before everything went crazy in the world uh, after three years of being in Southeast Asia. And, but, you know, we've got some friends still in Southeast Asia. They're in nice apartments, they're, but they're, they're cooped up. They can't even go down to the... the the shared facilities. Um, I mean, in Asia, obviously, it's a lot hotter. Swimming pools are the norm. Um, it's not an expensive luxury. It's just part and parcel of living in that part of the world. And but yeah, you, they can't use the the gymnasiums or the, the the swimming pools or any any facilities that might be there. So yeah. So which reminds me again, if you're new to the show, let us know in the comments where in the world you are. What does lockdown look like for you? and um, come on the show and, t and tell us all about it. Have, have things eased for you? It's my nighttime snack. My daughter just still up like, 15 minutes before the show is going live. I just can't get her to go to sleep. So I've run out of time to just relax and get ready. Anyway, so I've done a bit of housekeeping. If you want to come on the show, hit the chat, um, and you'll see the, the Skype link there, which is also on the screen. And yeah, let us know where you are, and, um, and we'll, we'll make that happen. So a little bit... Before we get to Thoughtful Thursday, what's on your mind? Just a quick background of the show, why the show exists, um, what's in it for you, and take it from there. First of all, there's going to be a short, short version. So this is um, this is show number fourteen. I started on Easter Monday, uh, Monday to Friday, hit every day as part of my own leveling up. I'll get to that in just a minute. And, and, but the show came out quite spontaneously as a, as a result of um, five things sort of coming together. And I'll just go rapid fire on them. But if you want the sort of full background, you can pretty much watch any of the first 12 episodes while I was getting going, um, trying to get, trying to find my stride. Uh, and you'll get a full a full explanation of of the breakdown. And I, I pretty much repeat it most nights. And a lot of that was related to me just showing up and, and getting used to this environment. And but now on to show 13, 14, I'm feeling like no, actually I'm I'm feeling like I'm, I know what I'm doing now. Um, I'm lev I've leveled up. You know what I've learned in in the 12 days of, of using this software. Um, is, is, is amazing. So, you know, little things like the, the two-minute timer at the beginning, I've just put that in there as a bit of a buffer just to make sure that I've got everything, forces me to sort of go live, make sure you know that I'm there. And But it's just a nice little graphical um, sort of waiting hold, and I'm hoping that the two minutes is just, just long enough that, you know, you could come on, you could go, I'm just going to make a cup of tea. Um, and, and it's also... It means I know that the live is kept in. Um, it also means that uh, I've kind of got a checklist going um, through my mind and on paper, and any last minute things, you know, I can check them in the, I've forgotten to plug earphones in before. I uh, found out the other day that, you know, I've got these sound effects, I'll just play these. Um, so I have these sound effects. Go, 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 go. You know, and if you come on, we can give you a big blow. Uh, and you know, keep it light hard and have a bit of a party. So, but, but I I didn't realise when I was playing these sound effects um, how loud they were, or I didn't I didn't cotton on how loud they were on the other end. And also because I worked out after a few shows the 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 delay. So I so say I'm talking, but the, what what comes through on YouTube is at least, I reckon, a minute behind. Some people say, I don't think anyone's afraid, I don't think anyone's 
confident to say just how long the lag is, but the lag moves to several minutes by the end of the show, in my opinion. Um, I'm not watching it live, so I I don't know for sure, but um, when we have guests on, I can sometimes tell because they, they're ready and they come through on Skype and that becomes live and they've still got it playing and I realise I've said that a, a good couple of minutes ago. Anyway, so a friend of mine challenged me in a podcast. He didn't challenge me personally, but he was um, putting out a podcast. And basically in that podcast, he said, if, you'd, if you don't use this time wisely, you only have yourself to blame if by the time things move on, you haven't moved on with them like other people have. You know, so don't get trapped in the gates, you know, playing... Uh, games and binge watching Netflix while maybe your colleagues and your family and, and friends have, have, have moved on to new skills and new hobbies, you know. So it was it was just a little jolt in the arm to something to think about. And I'll say I'll talk about that more in, in all the previous episodes. Then I was introduced to uh, a gentleman, Trey, who's been on the show from Mexico. Now, Trey and I have only just met each other. We were introduced by a mutual friend, but he was trying to breathe life into a small uh, business accountability group. I uh, won't bore you with the details. I'd say you can go and watch any of the previous episodes. But uh, I've got some previous experience in that space. I wanted to contribute. The time zones are not quite lining up for me to jump into his his group. We had a chat. Uh, we agreed we'd sleep on it. And, and that's what I did. But it just got me thinking. So Martin is challenging me to... Um, continue investing. I mean, I've always, I'm always investing in myself. So it wasn't taking that as a personal challenge, but um, it resonated with me. Then I had the chat with Trey about the accountability. Then Ellie and I were just reflecting as, you know, COVID-19 kicked in in earnest and and it was becoming obvious that, you know, connectivity, social, social connections were getting harder and harder. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were available and we put it out there that if anyone wanted to jump into our online calendars, they could do that, and we would we would make ourselves chat. They could ask us anything, which leads to point number four. I saw some of my own mentors and inspirations putting up themselves in this sort of platform where they made themselves available for an ask me anything type thing. So we were like, yeah, the, the, uh, I didn't want to just offer the calendar. I thought I could do more which led to point number five, because I've been trying to do more with video for a long while. We have a heap of content. We're not video editors. We're not graphic designers. We're not videographers. We've, but we've got all this content, and we just can't keep up with it, and it hasn't been a priority, and we want it. We'd love to put it out there and, and be all professional and, and got this nice rhythm going, but horses for courses, you know. We, we were dealing with mess when we first left, um, recovering from burnout, we then had a second child, we just had so many distractions, and also learning what the hell to do in this, this world. So I probably should just take, just go off for a second. Um, I, I'll finish, I'll finish the, the background. So the, the, the fifth point was that I was going to challenge myself to, to level up with live video, because the beauty of live video is you don't need to edit anything. So I can just talk to you on the camera, like I'm doing now, and um, and then we just we we press finish and it, it's broadcast or you know and people can come in and you don't have to I don't have to worry about my ums and my ahs you know that's you you'll tell me if I how I can do better and and that that's the purpose of it so I'm leveling up by do, you know learning how to use this software so I'm using some software called Ecamm Live on my MacBook Pro. Ecamm Live only works on the Mac operating system, but it's a fantastic system, and it's what's allowing me to, do, you know, like pop pop over here, talk to this camera, okay, can move between the scenes, like being in my own little TV studio. Um, it's what allows me to play the, well done, Paul, you know, play, play the, play the sound, play the sound. I only have these limited amount of sounds, but I can bring more sound into the show at, at, at another point, and, and, you know, but that's for another day. It allows me to do um, 
it's, it's how I can bring up this where in the world are you. It's nice and easy. It's how I can bring up things like, so, so here's something else we can do. If you're interested, we can do a website review. So if I had changed, can I change that? Can't change that. But yeah, so this is another scene that allows me to set up. You, you So this, this scene is letting me share my screen and you're seeing my paused uh, video and uh, actually on YouTube. So if that was unpaused or I went to another window, so we won't do that. Um, actually, we'll get to this in a minute. We'll get to this. And I'm just going to scoot that in there like that. And we'll come back to that in a minute because this is... Um, this is what I'm going to be talking about on Thoughtful Thursday. So we'll come back to that in a minute. And I didn't realize, but that, that's going to work perfect. So we'll go, we won't do a website review, but we'll use that scene. Anyway, so I come back to um, I come back to this camera. So I challenge myself to get better with this software and be able to do things. So I'm, it's how I can also do things. So I said who. Let's just say who we are. So I'm Colin Clapp from Parenting Passports and Profits. And dot com. Uh, we, when I talk about we, I'm talking about me and my partner Ellie, and we have two young girls. We are a world schooling location independent family. We've been on the. We're from New Zealand. We have been on the road for about. We're into our fourth year, so it's like just over three. February two thousand and seventeen is when we left New Zealand, pretty much on a one way ticket. Now, back then we were not in a good place mentally. Um, we'd suffered a little bit back in New Zealand and lost quite a lot and, and we were burned out and we were just, yeah, it wasn't the greatest period in our life and we needed to recover and bounce back. And we came across the sort of digital nomad world schooling movement and we realized we could move to Southeast Asia, live a lot better than we could if we stayed in New Zealand uh, with our current circumstances, was determined to stay present as a family, give ourselves time. We had one daughter at the time, and we wanted uh, we were already committed to homeschooling and being with her twenty four seven, and we wanted to make sure that we didn't jeopardise that. You know that was a important part of our vision for our family, and and we wanted to make sure that we. We, we honoured that to ourselves and we, we still felt excited about that. So we, we um, headed to Southeast Asia, didn't know where we were going, but we ended up in Malaysia for 10 months and that was a huge recovery period and helped us sort of see the light and, and move on. And we've been making it up ever since then and learning what it takes to be location independent and honing and developing skills that, that would be location independent. So now that we can earn dollars anywhere in the world, um, and in different currencies, and and, and we we pretty much dispose, disposed of all of our possessions. We own virtually nothing now, and we travel slowly. We're not um, we're not sort of you know we're not rich and 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 carefree and just do what the hell we like. We we work hard still, but we we don't. We travel light and slow, so we only have two check bags and three carry-on bags, and we now have a fourth member of the family. Our second daughter was born at the beginning of 2019, and we just threw her straight into the lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, so she's she got on her first plane before she was 10 weeks and, and started living in Vietnam. So she, yeah, she's very much a global citizen, multicultural baby, toddler. Um, and will be for the foreseeable future. So we've been in Southeast Asia. Uh, we've been in Southeast Asia nearly all this time. Uh, mainly three countries: Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. And it was only, and it, uh, we were more most recently in Vietnam for a couple of months, just after the turn of the year I think I'm just trying to think where we yeah just after the I'm losing track I think yeah just after the turn of the year flew to uh, the Philippines and was planning to come to Europe a bit later on in the year 
uh, but Ellie saw a house set available here in France and applied for it. Uh, we have done some house sitting before as a family, so it's not, not our first rodeo when it comes to house sitting. Excuse me, I just touched my screen. We, yeah, so we have done some house sitting as a family. They're definitely not as easy to get as a family, but they're not impossible. We, you know, we've done maybe four or five, um, two or three with Ayla, and then um, two or three with, with Romy on board as well. I'm just Anyway, point I'm, I'm just sharing that because if you've ever considered house sitting as a family, it is possible. So we reached out to this family, uh, sorry, uh, this, this uh, uh, retired couple who put their house up and they hadn't asked for a family, but when they saw that we were a family, they actually wanted us. <laughs> they put us top of the list. And so serendipitously, we found ourselves on the way to Europe, a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of our initial plans, but we could not have foreseen how fortuitous that, that was because we got to France, I've lost track of the date, I want to say about March the 6th, something like that. We got to, uh, flew straight into France um, from the Philippines and we, we came through with no one checked that where we'd come from wasn't interested. I mean, we've come from an environment where everyone's used to wearing masks. Masks in Southeast Asia are just a, a very common, no one bats an eyelid. And then you get here and no one's, no one's wearing masks. Well, they certainly weren't back then. They are now. But we came through. We got to our house set a few days later. We were made so welcome. Uh, they disappeared. Uh, they're in Australia. We then had a few days of just getting our bearings, uh, obviously still not knowing that things were about to change. Um, but we had, a, we had enough time to get our bearings, uh, get sorted, uh, get some warm clothes. I've got like a sweatshirt on. Uh, um, you know, we've had an endless summer for nearly four years, so we were a bit lacking in um, clothes. And learn how to put fires on in this uh, country house. And yeah, get with it. And then suddenly we're we're locked down. And uh, so it's not been the end of the world for us. We we feel extremely blessed. Um, if we'd been trapped in Southeast Asia with the two children in an apartment that we couldn't go out of. I'm mm, not too sure how we'd all be how we'd all be coping. So, um, excuse me, I've just lost my screen completely. Um, here we go. Um, get you back. Um, so, yeah, very feel very fortuitous that we have um, found ourselves in the, in this environment. So, okay. So, I'm just going to quickly check the chat, see if we've got any. Um, any chat that I need to take care of, you know, we're all good. Um, let's get my scenes back. And yeah, so tonight I thought, uh, anyway, so, so that, that, that was um, who we are. If you just want to check who, uh, a little bit. So I, I um, location independence, uh, how I make that work is I provide online marketing done for you services, mainly content optimization, search engine optimization, technical site audits, website reviews, uh, we, can, we can do email automation, things like that, keyword research. So if you want to know a bit more about that, head on over to onlinemarketingdoneforyou.com and you can learn a bit more that, about that. And if you want to uh, learn more about Ellie, Ellie is a health and fitness professional. Uh, so she, is, she, she has her own site and does a lot of free, freelance uh, writing in that space. And you can find out more about Ellie over at elliemcginnis.com. So that's our that's our background. Check any of those out. Uh, quick housekeeping again. Remember, if you want to come on the show, it's open slather. Love to have you, whether you know me from the past or going to know me in the future. Uh, please don't be shy. You know, I want you to tell the world what's going on in your world. You know, come and promote something. Come and share some insightful thoughts. Um, come and practice being on, on video. And yeah, just click on the link in the chat or off the screen. You can't click it off the screen, but if you can just make a note of that, it's a, it's a new address each night, so I don't have any way of making it clickable on the screen. And um, yeah, uh, one thing I should say, if, if you are new to the show and 
yeah, please um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, makes all the difference. Uh, helps uh, juice me, to help tell YouTube you are getting some value out of this, and remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications. So, okay, all right, so let's go to Thoughtful Thursday, and what's on my mind, if you're not gonna tell me what's on your mind, uh, I, I tell you what's on my mind, apart from being released out of COVID-19, is this questionnaire that I, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump to my website review scene because uh, website review. I'm, I'm not going to do a website review. It's just <laughs> I suddenly realised that would actually work. So effectively, this scene is allowing me to share the screen, and you can see what I can see, and we won't worry about the clock. And um, that's for the website reviews. But so yeah, a friend of mine, another world schooler who we met. Um, Australian family. We met them in Bali just briefly. We actually, as I say, friends. We, you know, we don't know it. We don't know each other very well. Um, but their life has taken them to Panama, and she's she's breathing life into some world schooling resources. And she asked us and a few others, and anyone in this 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 movement, um, if they would record some video and answer some questions. And she just had four questions. <laughs> Uh, and I wonder if I've, it might have just been the four questions at, at the top there. And then put, I said, I, I just said, of course I help. Um, happy to help. And and then she pinged me back. <laughs> and she said, there's actually quite a few more questions if you want to if you want to tackle those. And so she sent me her questionnaire. And here it is. And it turns out there's 50 questions. Um, uh, so I'll just. I'll just go over there, and what you should see is, yeah, yeah she says says there's 50, and there's a few bullets there that, yeah, look, there's 50 questions, including um, these ones here, which are, are not bulleted. So there's more than 50 questions. So, um, so let's have a look at these, and how would I answer some of these? So what is world schooling? Why did you start world schooling? How has world schooling resolved your reasons for starting? What is the difference between homeschooling, unschooling, world school? Okay, well, actually, why don't we why don't we just um, tackle those one at a time? Uh, because yeah, if you if I I was going to have a crack at this last night, by the way, because Wednesdays are going to be world school in Wednesdays, and I was going to jump into this, but my live stream last night actually got um, cut off um, after about twenty minutes through the internet. So uh, let's. Um, Let's jump out. So what is world schooling? Good question. What is world schooling? Now I have done some videos on this maybe two years ago, of why are we world schooled? And and I haven't looked at those again. And but world schooling to me is simply having a global view of the world. Really, that's that's it. And so if you read our About page, I'm pretty confident on there, we talk about world schooling being done from your your own home. So we, don't, we no longer have a home. We no longer have a permanent base. But many world schoolers do. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to be traveling. And uh, it, it's, it's not for me to, to be judge or juror on your definition of world schooling. So it's really much, you know, what, what do I consider world schooling? And, well, what I consider world schooling is, as I say, Ellie and I have always sort of seen ourselves as global citizens. She was a traveler before in her younger years. I've traveled a bit. Um, and, but we hadn't traveled as a couple. And... We hadn't even really talked about it. And just we 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 planned to have a child very quickly, and we got down to business, and it all fell into place. And I guess, apart from a nice long holiday together in Bali, we just parenthood took us over, and travel just didn't even uh, come up. And uh, the, there were other factors that came into that, but. Uh, and uh, you can 
yeah, you can find out more about why, well, I'll get to that in why's world school. Why, why did we go on it? But so we had already seen, we already consider ourselves global citizens. So what, yeah, what is world school? And I would say it is, it is having a global mindset. I get quite embarrassed and ashamed to a degree when I hear people, yeah, but the Brexit thing, you know, that to me, I, I, I haven't been to England for 15 years and I have no interest in going to the UK, even now, like it's a hop, skip and a jump away, COVID-19 COVID aside, but I have zero interest in going to the UK. And it's things like Brexit that, I didn't want to go there before Brexit, but that concept, I'm sorry, that it's a, I'm an immigrant. I chose to go to New Zealand and become an, a New Zealand citizen, and I'm an immigrant. My circumstances may be completely different from people who have, have been um, refugees and have and, uh, um, escaped from countries that are war -turn, war torn. I know every immigrant's got a story and a reason why they went to a new country. And if they weren't happy, if they were happy where they were, they wouldn't have gone. And I remember one of the proudest days of my life was becoming a New Zealand citizen. And just because I knew inside me what it had taken to get to that moment when they gave me that certificate and, and said, you're, I'm, I'm even feeling like proud right now because I can still picture it. And my best friends at the time were, were, came and, and with me, and it was it was a special day. And and yeah, I, yeah, I can't describe it. If you when you pursue a goal for a long while and and you get knocked back after knocked back after knocked back, and then after many many years it comes to fruition in such a big way, I believe you deserve to, to feel proud. And however proud I felt because of what I'd done to get there, and I'd say my circumstances, are, you know, I didn't lose a leg or get shot at or anything like that, but I know, what, I know what's happened in my past and what it took for me to get there and how many hurdles I had to overcome to make that happen. But I was completely humbled when I saw all of these other people, probably 70 people got their citizenship on the day I got mine. And when I heard the stories of what they'd been through to get there, it's like, wow, you know, I know what I went through to, to get there, to overcome my hurdles, but they were nothing compared to what some of these people had, had overcome to escape, the, escape this, that, and the other. And, and so I have a real difficulty um, being around environments where we can't mix freely with different nationalities. Um, and having been world schooling, we have been made so welcome wherever we have been. We, we have friends all over the world, and every time we settle into a new place, we are, we are embraced, and we embrace them, and they embrace us with a smile on our face, and... And uh, and it don't matter what country it is. It's just it's it's beautiful. It's it's just beautiful. So yes, yeah, so you can tell I kind of could get very passionate about that. And respect to you if you feel differently. Um, but I see myself as a global citizen, and I do my best to respect wherever I am, and and fit in, and not not have them fit in with me. Anyway, let's let's move on. I want to keep this a bit lighthearted. So let's go back to the questions. What was the second question? The second question was, why did you start world schooling? Okay, so now you are going to get our story. Why did you start world schooling? And let's go to this camera. Okay, so we started world schooling accidentally. So we. We were committed to home education before our eldest was even born. We felt really strongly about that. And we had no idea what world schooling was. We didn't even know what unschooling was back then. But 
when she was born, our mindset was that you know we're going to facilitate facil facilitate her education from the beginning. So at that point, it was all about home education. Then, then what happened was, uh, say I've alluded to it in our previous life back in New Zealand, we we had a failed business. Uh, we we lost pretty much lost everything. Um, and we burned out. Won't bore you with the details. Head over to the website. You can read a bit about that in the about page. So, yep. And if you if you're interested, you can go to the. Let me just uh, bring that back on the screen. Let me say yeah. So, I digress. But if you want to head on over there, head the about page, and you can you can see what's going on. Uh, so we we were we were burned out. And I've never. I'm a pretty positive person. I'm an optimistic person, and we, but we, yeah, we lost, we lost a lot. We didn't lose everything, but we lost a lot, and and we lost our confidence. You know, that's the worst thing. You lose your confidence, and it, it, when that when that goes, you, you, it, it's hard. And uh, the day that I, the day that I realised I had to let go of what I was holding on to back then, with our business that wasn't working was the darkest day of my life. I remember walking out the house, as I say, at that time, just a partner, and my, my, my daughter would have been two, two and a half maybe, and I was in such a bad way. I walked out the house. I walked through the, the, the houses and the streets till I came to the edge of the forest that was not far from where we lived. I walked into the forest, and I knew I was just going to keep walking until I hit the beach, and I wasn't coming home until the girls were in bed because my mind was mashed and I, um, I didn't know what, what to do. I think I had my phone on me, but I had no money or nothing. I just walked to the beach, and I literally got to the beach, and I sat down on the beach, and I stared out at, at the sea. There's no one around. I mean, New Zealand is a very um, sparsely populated country at the best of the times, and when you go through the forest and there's no one on the beach, it's, it's kind of beautiful, and it's a nature, and... Um, the sun came down and the moon came up and I sat there for hours and hours and hours in a very dark place. And that was probably the lowest point. And, but I, I share that story because it was the turning point. And then after that, in answer to the question, why, why did we start world schooling is because we had, we had, to, we had to leave New Zealand. We, had to, we just needed a change of scenery. First thing we needed to do was get out of Christchurch where we were from. We sold everything we could. We bought a one-way um, trailer hire, took it up to the North Island where Ellie's mum lives, and and we just rested and recuperated for a few months. And the only uh, something I want to share with you is, you know, if you if you are on a wave, and and this could be happening now, you know, right now, COVID nineteen, many people are losing their jobs, and this is not going to be a good time for some people. But everything is seasonal, and it passes. And I remember specifically when Ellie and I left our house behind us, we said, the only thing we need to do right now is not do anything. We don't, the only thing we need to decide now is to not decide anything. In other words, we just need to be. We need to be with each other. We need to remind ourselves how to smile again, how to laugh again, um, make sure we stay present for our daughter, and, and just be... Learn how to be happy again, you know, because when the world is collapsing around you, you just get so caught up and and it's not it's not a good place. So that's what we did. We just bought ourselves some time, went and stayed with Ellie's mum for three months in the summer in Gisborne and bought ourselves time. No decisions, no decisions. Just wake up every day, just see how we feel. We wanted to clear up all the mess from be the past, make sure we left New Zealand. We wasn't leaving New Zealand at that time, but our head held high and we wanted to make sure, excuse me, I just want to make sure everything is still working as it should be. Come back, come back, come back. Um, yeah, we wanted to make sure we left New Zealand with our head, our head held high, taking care of everything. And we, we've got some comments here. Paul Cash. Hello, my old friend. 
I told you I'd like to connect with people in the past. Yes, there's a, an old school friend. <laughs> Lovely to hear from you, Paul. Um, where was I? So, um, brought ourselves some time, and during that time, that is when we, that is when we read about, that is when we discovered digital nomadism, world schooling, location independence, just through reading some books. And as we contemplated what the future looked like, how we were going to recover mentally, financially, and all of those things, as we as we stewed on those things, we were like, well, we could do this. We haven't travelled. Um, we could probably go to Southeast Asia, and they say, I think I mentioned earlier, we could live, we could live differently, we could live better, and 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 sort of turn our life around, and that's what we did. So. So that was a very long-winded, that was the sort of backstory. And if we go to go back to let's go back to that question again. Why did you start world schooling? So yeah, that was a very long-winded saying. We started world schooling accidentally in order to recover from a period of our lives that didn't go to plan and took us down a dark alley that we do not want to go back back into. And and that's how it started. And I mean, there's a lot more I could share on that and more than happy to, to do that if we get questions. How has world schooling resolved your reasons for... I guess I've started to allude to that. How has world schooling resolved your reasons for starting? Uh, it has resolved them... Well, it did buy us time. It did buy us time. So the quality of life we ended up, let me just, we, we eventually flew from New Zealand to Singapore where we stayed with um, Ellie's sister who lives there for a couple of weeks while we contemplated which country would be next. We were looking for somewhere where we felt we could just um, hit the ground running a little bit and what we was planning to do next, which was work online. I, I'm missing out part of the story, but it's it was, um, we felt our future would be online. So whilst we, we'd had a failed business experience, when we sifted through the wreckage, we felt that going into the online space was something that we had proved to ourselves we could do. It's just we chose the wrong business model and it wiped us out. We... We were in Singapore, not 100% sure where we would go, but we thought Malaysia would be the, the, Malaysia sounded like it would be the best environment. And we initially went to Kuala Lumpur, and our first impressions of Kuala Lumpur weren't great, but it was purely because of where we, where we ended up staying, which was a long way out the city, wasn't a nice part of town. And at that point, we didn't know what we were doing, so this just didn't feel very comfortable. We've been back to Kuala Lumpur uh, two or three times since, and we have a completely different experience, and we love it now. And we've got friends there, and yeah, we would we would recommend Kuala Lumpur for any world schooling family. In fact, KL probably has the best world schooling networks that we've we've come across. And there's a lady there, Chong Si Ming. She is um, unbelievable. She is so accommodating, so amazing. Um, yeah, so if, you, if, you, if you're listening to this and you ever feel like you're going down the world schooling route and you want to you wanna make sure you've got some community around you straight away, KL is one of the places, one if not the only place in Southeast Asia that we found it. So I'm just going to change cameras. Uh, what happens if I do that? Yep. Um, Yeah, so KL would be an awesome place to do that. So KL didn't work, but we went to Penang, and it was in Penang that everything just started to to, to come right. And it, I mean, it's still coming right now. You know, three years on, we just feel like we've. I'm kind of I'm moving uh, ahead of myself now. But in Penang, we were able to rent an apartment at a very affordable price, something like. 500 US dollars and 
we got electricity and fast internet and we had a, a little tiny playground down below in the apartment complex there was a there was a gym and a squash court and and when i say they don't think these are the most fancy gyms and squash courts they're not the, the building complex was about 30 years old but this one was well maintained um but the main thing is it had a swimming pool and it had a nice swimming pool and when you're in that southeast asian heat the the you can't help but want to go in the pool and sometimes we were the only ones in the pools because the asians don't come out during the day and they they're scared of the the, the the skin effects and so we would often find ourselves out um in the middle of the day being the only ones in the pool and our daughter aged three and a half at the time just by being in the pool every single day learned to swim pretty much by herself no lessons just and we didn't do most of how we t facilitate her learning is we just give her a little bit of a nudge on the one or two things and then she picks the baton up and and takes care of it herself so the she learned to swim so by the time she was three and a half she's also sort of holding her own in the water and when i say holding her own i mean she certainly you couldn't throw her overboard on, on a yacht or anything like that but she was you could tell that she was she was making progress and everything has just kicked on from there so we had a um, we had a spacious apartment I uh, say so not not modern but but comfortable clean um, we found a co-working space uh, that was definitely commutable Ellie and I both could walk there it was a 45 minute walk in the Asian mayhem and but yeah I started getting into podcasts as I was walking to work and then went into this co-working environment and slowly but surely started to learn navigate my way around the online world and learn you know the things we now do professionally uh, search engine optimization keyword research um, websites we didn't have those skills when we left but we we just dived in and and we had websites but we other people had built them and we just started digging digging and digging until we how does that work how does that work and we just kept doing it anyway so going back to the going back to the question um i should know how, i should be able to do that with a keyboard there we go going back to the question um how has world school and resolve your reasons for starting yeah so by choosing to live in a world schooling way we we bought ourselves time and our quality of life um being away from our home country new zealand it's just we just feel like the less we have, the happier we are. So, you know, we've got down to, like I say, one, two check bags and three carry-on bags, and that takes care of the family. And we've got a mobile office in all of that. And, and yeah, when we come across stuff, we kind of feel on edge. And so we're surrounded by a lot of stuff right now. And it is nice to have, it is nice to have space, and it's nice to have a nice big kitchen um, right now so Ellie can cook and bake with, um, with Ayla, but um, excuse me, I'm just uh, just checking. No one dived into Skype, and we, yeah, it's it, it's awesome, really awesome. And but we like traveling light. We just love being light. As I say, the less we have, the happier we are. So, okay, I'm going to be wrapping up in a few minutes. So, what is the difference between homeschooling, unschooling, and world schooling? So. I'll leave with my thoughts on that. What is the difference between homeschooling, unschooling, and world schooling? So again, there's no dictionary definitions for all of these. So this is just my my view. Uh, homeschooling to me is homeschooling to me is um, pretty much to to varying degrees. It is taking the schooling system and bringing it into a home environment. Now, there are very, the, the, the spectrum of homeschooling right through to an unschooling, world schooling thing is, is vast and there are many interpretations. So I'm simplifying it purely through my lens, not, not through anyone else's lens. But I would interpret homeschooling, home education as to a degree, 
you're taking the schooling system or a variation of it, some kind of curriculum, some kind of structure, uh, some kind of learning platform, you're taking that and implementing it into the home. So there are, yeah, it's the, it's the structure that is how I would, um, is how I would define homeschooling. On, on one extreme, you've got people who are literally taking the, the same system that a child would learn in their school, but for one reason or another, they don't want the child to be in school. And there can be many reasons for that. It could be health, it could be religion, it could be beliefs or whatever. But they don't want the child to go to school, but they want the child to have the same education they would have got if they'd gone to the school. So they literally pick up that education system and, and have it in the home. And that would be on one. And then there'll be other people who go, no, don't like that education system. I'm going to get that one, that one, and that one, and I'm going to piece it together and come up with my own curriculum and, and make it work. And piecemeal it together. But there's still some structure and some disciplines about how they go about their day and their learning for, for, the, for the children in the family. So that's home education. Unschooling, which was a phrase that we had never heard of before, we, before our child was born, but it didn't take us long to come across it. And that really is when the structure goes away and it is, it is very much child-led. I say this is a spectrum and there's no, you know, there's no sort of, oh, it starts here and it starts there. You know, and you might talk to another family and they'll, they'll go, we're unschoolers, but you talk to them and they have got some structure. So, the, and if that's, if that's what works for them and that's in their, their interpretation, that's fine. I say it's not a test and it doesn't matter. The, the only thing that should really matter is that the family, excuse me, the family is happy and the child is, the child is growing and developing. And, and growing and developing at the pace that they they should grow, not what someone else thinks they should grow. So I guess this, yeah, so this goes into the unschooling. Our experience of unschooling is it's very much child-led. And what that requires is a huge level of trust of, of the parent in themselves, in the child, that when they see the child showing an interest in anything, they need to facilitate that um, interest and initiative and not sort of second guessing everything and try to bring the child back to maths or English or history or whatever. If the child shows an enthusiasm for a subject, whatever that might be, roll with it. And, and if it takes over your life for a few weeks or a few months, roll with it and enjoy it. And, and the child will... The, the child has got an innate curiosity and if we nurture that curiosity that will hold them in good good stead for their life as opposed to saying no you, you do that later or do that when you grow up or do that when you're an adult or whatever you know there's, there's no need for that and so but this is quite an uncomfortable stance for many people and I believe it's down to a lack of trust, a lack of trust in yourself and a lack of trust in your child that the child will flourish and that you can facilitate that flourish. And that is the challenge because we don't see any evidence that our child is not developing. I mean, man, do we have some fights at home. But part of that is because we've probably given her so much responsibility and let her um, let her develop. I, I guess on one level she, I mean, on some levels she, she doesn't have the confidence, but she's only six. I mean, and they don't have emotional maturity at that age. And you know, parents, we can get ahead of ourselves. And Eric, I, I know mainly my own expectations. Maybe I'm getting too far ahead of myself, but she, her her knowledge, which has been directed by herself and we've just facilitated I have nothing to worry about and she's she's fine um I'm we couldn't be we couldn't feel like we're more blessed and and our 15 month old is he 15 15 month old um even today you know she's sitting on a couch you know picking up books just doing it so she, she can't read but she's just learned how to 
sort of recognize which way up they go. Now that may seem, some people may just think of that as nothing, but we know through our first child, that's how she got reading. She would just pick up books and she would just look at them. And as time went on, we would read to them and then she'd start reading them back. And, and, and that's why she's a reader now, because she, she, she just got into books and we just let her run with it and we just prompted and encouraged. And so she hasn't had any formal education, but her reading is fantastic. She's reading chapter books now from back to front and taken on more and more. And we've arrived in this book and this house where there are books all over the place. It's, it's, it's been a total blessing to be surrounded by so much personal development, so so much positivity, which really fits in with uh, who Ellie and I are. And 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 yeah, I'd say our old, eldest has just got all these books, and so you can see her vocabulary going up and up and up and up, and we we love it. Found a she found an encyclopedia last week, a children's encyclopedia, so. She's just devouring it, you know. She doesn't use um, devices, and so it's awesome. So what is world schooling? So, so unschooling is child-led, facilitate the child's facilitate the child's learning, and I guess world schooling is probably just um, a, an evolution of maybe both homeschooling and unschooling, depending on. Um, whether you've gone down the structured route or the non-structured route, either way, you could still go to world schooling because of what I, how I described it at the beginning. World schooling is just taking a global perspective. So uh, that, that would be it, really. So homeschooling is structured, unschooling is unstructured, and world schooling, can, world schooling is taking a global perspective, whether you've got a structured learning environment or an unstructured learning environment so okay we've just gone over the hour i think that is uh, enough on my first thoughtful thursday hopefully it gives you something to think about i um <laughs> very grateful to hear from my old mucker paul cash there um who knows where he is what he's doing i haven't heard sight of sound from him for three decades um or he probably hasn't heard from me for three decades anyway so this is the wonderful world we, we live in right now. Okay, all right, so that's it. Colin Clapp, Parenting Passports and Profits. Uh, if, you, if you want to see the show uh, on a regular basis, if you head over to, where have I got it, over here. Put that in your browser. Uh, hopefully you can see that, my screen. There we go. Um, put that in your browser. Head on over there, and that should take you straight to the latest YouTube Live. And yeah, so just bookmark that and join me anytime. And use the chat and the comments to let me know what you're thinking. So before I go, remember, if you have watched this all the way through and got something out of it and want to sort of influence how the show is going, remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and we're going to get better at this, okay? We're going to get better. So tomorrow is Family Friday, uh, and we'll see if we can introduce you to some other world schoolers. Okay, on that note, wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, if you're just waking up having a cup of coffee somewhere like New Zealand or Australia, or whether you're just having a snack in the Americas, or whether you're like me in Central Europe and it's time to go and get some sleep, all the best. I will see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.